During the second week of human development, the blastocyst attaches to the wall of the uterus. The blastocyst's outer layer of cells are called trophoblast cells, and they penetrate into the uterus, establishing a connection between the blastocyst and the mother. The blastocyst's inner layer of cells are called embryoblast cells, and they turn into a new, flat, two-layered structure which eventually gives rise to all the organs and tissues of the body. By day 7 or 8, the blastocyst implants on the surface of the endometrial wall, or decidua, and the area that it implants into is called the decidua basalis. To snuggle deeper into the decidua basalis, trophoblast cells from the outer layer of the blastocyst assemble into two layers of cells, one called the cytotrophoblast, which are mononucleated cells, and the other called the syncytiotrophoblast, which are a multinucleated cluster of cells. The syncytiotrophoblast expands into the decidua basalis. By day 9, the syncytiotrophoblast has pushed deeper into the deciduous basalis, and by day 11, it's almost completely buried within it, like a seed getting pushed into soil. Around day 12, the decidua undergoes a decidual reaction. High levels of progesterone make the decidual cells enlarge and get coated in a sugar-rich, fatty fluid, which can get absorbed by the syncytiotrophoblast and help sustain the embryo early on. Initially, the decidual reaction only occurs at the decidua basalis, but eventually it spreads throughout all of the decidua. Around day 14 of development, cells at the syncytiotrophoblast start to protrude out to form little protrusions called primary villi, with each one looking a little bit like a tree. These primary villi trees form all the way around the fetus, and the cells start to clear out from between the primary villi, leaving behind empty spaces called lacunae. While this is all happening, arteries and veins from mom start to grow into the decidual basalis. Normally, we think of red blood cells as staying confined into the blood vessels, but as the placenta develops, an interesting thing happens. Tiny arteries merge with the lacunae, so these empty spaces become filled with oxygenated blood. Veins also merge with lacunae and bring blood back to the mother's heart. Now, over time, more and more of these little pools of blood develop, and they start to merge together to form a single large pool of blood, with many arteries delivering blood into it and many veins taking blood away. This large pool is called the junctional zone, so lots of fetal villi trees next to one another are basically submerged in the junctional zone. While this happens on the outside of the blastocyst, the inner embryoblast cells assemble into two layers, forming a flat structure called the bilaminar embryonic disc. The hypoblast is the ventral layer of the bilaminar disc, and it consists of cells that start to line the fluid-filled cavity containing the embryoblast cells, the blastocell, which then becomes known as the yolk sac. Oddly enough, this yolk sac contains no yolk. Instead, the yolk stack is filled with fluid, called vitellin fluid, which washes across the embryo, nourishing it during this early stage. It's a bit like how small critters in the ocean get nutrients directly out of the water. Now, the epiblast is the dorsal layer of the bilaminar disc, and it gives rise to all three germ layers of the embryo, the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. The amniotic cavity develops just above the bilaminar disc, and it gets lined with epiblast cells, so we end up with two little balls right next to each other. Meanwhile, in the embryoblast, cells from the epiblast layer start to differentiate into the extraembryonic mesoderm cells, named because they are outside of the developing embryo. These are some of the earliest mesoderm cells, and they start to form even while the embryoblast itself is a bilaminar disc. These mesoderm cells line the inside of the cytotrophoblast and begin creating space to form what will eventually become the chorionic cavity. Alright, as a quick recap. In week 2 of human development, the syncytiotrophoblast continues to expand into the decidua and begins to reorganize into primary villi. Blood vessels from mom grow nearby and create pools of blood near the villus trees. Inside the blastocyst, the embryoblast differentiates into the epiblast and hypoblast. Some cells from the epiblast become the extraembryonic mesodermal cells, which will go on to line the chorionic cavity.